baseball fans, the regular season is a wrap. It is super wild card weekend. We are so hyped for all the games on the schedule. I'm Lisa Kearney. This is FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win. Coming in hot from our Los Angeles studio. My guys, so ready to throw it down today. Sports betting expert Dave Weaver in-house. Hey. Former NFL hey. wide receiver and Super Bowl champion, Mr. James Jones. And of course, as always, Sports Talk Radio host Andrew Filipponi joining us from Pittsburgh. And the face of Marquee Sports Network, our NFL expert, Cole Wright, with us Boom. from Chicago. <laughs> oh, we're going to get into all of that. Yes. Guys, your holiday weekend plans are set. We've got games on Saturday. We've got games Sunday and Monday. We're breaking down every wild card matchup coming at us. Let's do this. More Ways to Win starts now. All right, so let's start with the first playoff game on the schedule. We got the seventh seeded Seattle Seahawks at number two seed San Francisco in the early game on Saturday. The Niners have won 10 in a row. It's the league's longest active winning streak, and they beat the Seahawks in both matchups this season, outscoring the Hawks by 27 points combined in those two games. Pete Carroll, guys, told the media, yeah, so unfortunately, We've got the 49ers. Yes. They're a big nine and a half point home favorite. So let's get you guys picks on this one. And Pony, you're going to get us started today. What you got? Line is too big. Uh, we're going to see Brock Purdy start at quarterback for San Francisco. Most NFL media types seem to think it's an article of faith that Mr. Irrelevant is going to have a really good game here. I'm not buying it. I'm not here to tell you that San Francisco is going to lose. But it's a different season now. It's the playoffs, the tempo, the pressure. Everything gets ratcheted up. We have not seen a rookie quarterback win in the playoffs since 2012. Russell Wilson, a lot of better rookies have come through and lost. Pete Carroll's 8-4 and four all time against Kyle Shanahan. The last time they played, the final score was 21-13. All I'm saying is pump the brakes on Purdy. Bad weather, too, Dave. I'm not calling for a blowout. I am. Guess, guess who's also playing his first playoff game? Geno Smith. He's never <laughs> been in the playoffs. And the first part of his season was really good. The last part of the season for the Seahawks, they're, they're going like this, and the Niners are the hottest team. You don't want to run into them. Defensively, they're the best in the league, 16.3 points a game. But offensively, with Brock Purdy, they've taken off. They've scored almost 34 points a game their last six games. Brock Purdy has at least two touchdowns. Some of the games he's even thrown three in his starts. Geno Smith in his last four games has five total touchdowns. So I think this is going to be an absolute, as James would say, Beat down. Beat down. Because yeah. I, I, tough I to beat a team three times, Dave. Down. Look at the Niners and Rams last year. And tough by, thing to by, do. by the way, the last time these two teams played, this is how different they are right now. The last two times, the last time they played, the line was three uh. mm -hmm. when when they were in Seattle. Yeah. And now it's almost ten. Uh -huh. It just shows you how much Seattle's slumping yeah. and how much the Niners have taken off. That's well, the way yeah. I see well, James, it. Well, yeah. teams, it doesn't matter who they put on the field. The Niners just keep figuring it out. Yeah, there's two things right here. Number one, Pone. Number one, Pony should wake up and he should get up here with us, right? Because we get coffee, we wake ourselves up and all that. So he's still sleep at home thinking about this number. <laughs> it's too, this number needs to be up there. It needs to be like 17 points or yeah. something. This is about to be a beatdown. It's Geno Smith's first playoff game. And you're right, Pony, everything does get faster. It's moving faster. And they have not been playing good football. Geno Smith has not been playing good football this, these last couple games as of late. Brock Purdy has been on fire, and nothing has changed for him. He's still playing with house money. He's going to go out here nice and relaxed, doing what he's doing. The Niners are on a whole different level than the whole league right now. We're talking 10 in a row. We're talking about the way they play in defense, the way they play in offense. They're on a whole nother level right now. And I'm going to go with Dave, and I'm going to repeat what Dave is saying. This is going to be. A beatdown yep. by the San Francisco 49ers. 
All right, so we got to get Cole in here because uh, you boot him out of the gate, so <laughs> might as well bring him into the fold here. Uh, in Probably addition to back spread, me up, Cole. Yeah, right? <laughs> Let's talk about these fun prop bets that are, are available Ooh. for us right now in the FanDuel Sportsbook. Cole, we're bringing you into the mix to get some rapid-fire yep. prop bet picks going. We're going to start with the over-under, 227.5 passing yards for Gino. Well, Geno Smith, he had nine games where he went over 234 passing yards on the season, and he did that six times in a row, weeks 10 through 15. Uh, had a little bit of a slump, like Dave said, but I think he's going to go over when it comes to those passing yards, Lisa. Okay, so let's get to his receivers. We've got over or under 63 and a half receiving yards for DK Metcalf. What do you think? Okay, DK Metcalf only 43 yards on four targets the last two weeks. He does have over 1,000 receiving yards for the season on 90 receptions, but just two games all season long with 100 or more. So I'm going to have to go with the under for DK. I mean, he's chills out of granite, but I don't think he's going to get above that. Big part of that machine for the San Francisco 49ers is CMC. What about Christian McCaffrey? Over or under 67 and a half rushing yards? Well, I like to call him Lil Sweet. He's the sweet one. Uh, last time out versus Seattle, 108 rushing yards. Those last four games, four touchdowns. So uh, I think that McCaffrey is going to do it again. He's going to go over that rushing total, Lisa. I figure that was an easy over. All right, Cole, awesome. Lil Moving sweet. on to the late game on Saturday. We've got the Chargers in the five seed. They're at the fourth seeded Jaguars. Justin Herbert had another huge regular season when you look at the whole body of work here, finishing second in the league in passing yards. Bad news, though, for a Jackson team that gave up the fifth most passing yards in the league. Keep that in mind when you're betting these props. These two teams actually met back in week three in Los Angeles. The Jags won that one 38 to 10. Mm. Of course, that was a long time ago. Both of these teams are much different now. Let's really get into it. The Jags have won five in a row. They are two and a half point home dogs. Pony, I can't figure this line out. Make some sense for us. Well, you brought up the first game, Lisa, and a lot has changed since then in terms of the players that are going to be on the field. Keenan Allen was out for that game, the go-to wide receiver. That was right after Herbert had injured his rib cartilage against Kansas City. He was way less than 100% in that game. And if you look at the way the Jags are trending, I love Trevor Lawrence, but look at the opposing quarterbacks they've beaten to make the playoffs the last three times out. Zach Wilson benched. Davis Mills and Josh Dobbs, a guy making his second start. This is Justin Herbert. The line is the way it is for a reason. The Chargers right now are a much more talented team than Jacksonville, and they will take them out. Dolphins West Cole, get on the train. Get on board, baby. I thought I coined the phrase, two Spider-Mans pointing at each other. And if you go on Twitter, the Chargers, they have released a hype video. And oh, by the way, James is in it. He said, it's time to panic. So we'll see if they're panicking at SoFi. But e either way, I've called the uh, Chargers out time and time again. They're the West Coast Dolphins. And this postseason, we're really going to see because they only have one win versus a team with a winning record. That was Miami in week 15. How about that? Now, that said, Chargers and their fake momentum, they're not going to be able to corral those dude ball dandies. Five in a row for Doug P and company and his 2017 Eagles. Get this, they won six of their last eight. So momentum, it is a real thing. Plus, Sunshine, Trevor Lawrence, well, over his last five, he's out there slanging it. Over 255 passing yards per game. And I don't see a slowdown this weekend because Josh Allen and the defense are going to continue to be stingy. The Jags, they're going to steal the show. 27-21 at the house. Bank on it. Uh, our producer just mentioned to me, and he's right. Dang, the Dolphins taking some strays on this show right now. Mm -hmm. uh, James, Duval not getting a lot of respect yeah. at home, yeah. sitting here as dogs. Who do you like in this one? You ready? I'm ready. One, two, three. Du 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 Yes. <laughs> the Jags at the crib. I like Trevor Lawrence and the Jags at the crib. And it's two reasons why I like them. Number one, they beat up on these boys earlier in the season. Number two, they not supposed to be in the playoffs. So they are playing with house money. They are going to be loose. They are going to be playing free. Their coach, Doug Peterson, knows how to get it done in the playoffs. He's got this team here. I think they come out well prepared. I think they come out, they jump out on the Chargers. Justin Herbert and them got to throw their way out of it. He turns the ball over a couple times. And doom! 
oh, is on to the next round. I love what they're doing right now, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Trevor Lawrence is not going to turn it over at home, and they win this game. Give us those U's, yes. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, let's talk about Sunshine, since you love um, Trevor Lawrence and this team so much. Uh, Dave, props. Is he going over or under 248 and a half? Uh, passing yards, Trevor Lawrence. None of these guys are talking about how good the Chargers secondary has got towards the end of the year. Mm. Four out of the last you, five games, they have <laughs> held quarterbacks to 165 yards or less. He's not hitting this number against this Chargers secondary under. Mm. All right, Peanut Gallery agrees with you. Mm. Yeah, uh, thanks, all right, Tony. let's move on <laughs> to the guys that catching those passes from Lawrence. Uh, over or under 55 and a half receiving yards for Christian Kirk. How do you feel about Kirk? He was his go-to guy the oh, first yeah. half of the year. But towards the end of the year, he's starting to find some other targets in Ingram, Zay Jones. I, I think, you know, target-wise, he's got less than six over the last three games on average. So I think he's going to find some other guys if he does get yards. They, they won't beat a Kirk. I'm going to take the under. Mm. All right. Let's look at these chargers. Does Austin Eckler go over or under 46 and a half rushing yards? In that game, in week number three, he had five yards. Ooh. But... Jacksonville was in front every step of the way. If you like the Chargers, I think you would play the over. I like the Chargers. So I'm going to play the over because I think they're going to be in front this time, and he's going to get those late yards. So I'm going to go over. I like it. All right, great stuff by Dave. We have lots more to get to here on More Ways to Win. We did spread, props, futures. There are a ton of fun bets at the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. So go ahead and download that app and check them out. It is Super Wild Card Weekend. And a reminder, you can get up to $1,000 back if you don't win your first bet. Yes, you right now, even during the playoffs. And new users, download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Sign up for your new account using the promo code right there on your screen. It's more ways 1,000 after you sign up. Just place your first bet with us. It's that easy. If you don't win, you're going to automatically get your stake back in free bets. So download the app today. Sign up using that promo code MoreWays1000 and play today. And there is so much to play for. The playoffs are here. Game picks for Sunday and Monday's matchups coming up. Plus, Dave missed his eight-leg parlay by one game last week, which means he is due. Dave's revealing his big payday parlay for Super Wild Card Weekend, and he's got a twist this week. Stay with us. That's next. Welcome back to more ways to win here on FanDuel TV. Thanks for hanging with us as we kick off the playoffs. And now it is time to turn a little into a lot. Dave's big payday parlay. This is where you bet just a few dollars to win thousands. We make it rain in here. Dave, you were one game <sighs> away from hitting all eight legs last week. Yeah, About 20 bucks into almost three grand. So yep. this week, you are going to hit them all. And you got a little twist. What do you got oh, for yeah. us? Yeah, so last week we were picking games. Today, we're going to try something different. It's going to be Dave's Big Payday Same Game Parlay, baby. Where same game. We're focused on one game, and we're picking eight different things to happen in that same game. The game we're going to use is the 49ers and the Seahawks. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use guys to score touchdowns, guys to get a certain amount of yards. But we're going to start with some touchdown scores. Yep. So guess who's back? Debo Samuel. Ah, he missed three weeks. Now. He got a little work in in week 18, but fresh legs here for Debo. He can score either on the ground or catching a ball. We know he can do both. Easy money. Last time that the 49ers played the Seahawks, George Kittle scored twice. I only need him to score once. So we need Kittle as an anytime touchdown score. Now our $20 is up to 120 bucks. Let's go Easier to the other side. Easier money. Let's talk about some Seahawks. Come I on. don't think anybody's scoring. So I'm going kind of against them. Yardage-wise, yep. Geno Smith under 227 and a half passing yards. If he gets some completions, I don't see him getting any 60-yard deep balls. We win money yards, right now. You 12 see yards. Money. We win money right now. Kenneth Walker, he yep. can get as many yards as he wants on the ground. I need him not to get 10 yards in the air. And I don't think he's going to throw to him at all nah. because he's got the other wideouts to go to. He'll hand the ball off. Now we're up to $408.90. More money. Watch what happens here, James. Come on now with this next bet. Oh, yeah. This is the hardest one. I need CMC to score twice. It's easy for him to score a touchdown, but to get a guy to score two times, I know you've done it in your <laughs> lifetime, money, I'm sure. Man, that's money. Look that's what happened. Easy money. It went to $2,785. So, look. The way they go through Christian McCaffrey, that's easy money. Two touchdowns, I'm with you. easy. Now, no more touchdowns. I got mm -hmm. all my touchdowns covered. Now we're going to get some guys mm -hmm. to get 
X amount of yards receiving. And what I like to do in the same game parlay is use the same guy twice. Yeah. If Kittle's going to get a touchdown, yep. he's obviously getting yards. If Debo's going to get a touchdown, he's obviously getting yards. So I'm going to take Debo Samuel to get 25 receiving yards. Kittle to get 25 receiving yards mm. and McCaffrey to get 25 mm. receiving yards and look what just happened it went from 2700 to 5100 just mm. for th that's 25 yards that's one catch we call that ching 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 and we call that money all on that, all of them all that money in your pocket so, we eat dinner on everybody here's the deal Lisa yep. you you the great thing about the same game parlay is you can tinker around with it you can yep. change this from 25 to 50 from 25 to yep. 75 and you, you could watch it grow but I'm going to keep it right there yep. Easy money there. That's what we're saying. Don't change none of 5, this. 5,100. And go right. get you some money. Go get you some money. Yeah, thanks for the tease, by the yeah. way, with the uh, bet <laughs> mojis over there. Dave going big with the same uh, game parlay. I can't believe this is the first time we've done this this season. I love it. I love, I it love an SGP. Um, all right, so here we are. Dave went big. We're giving you the bet moji treatment. So, guys, I want you to give me your reaction to Dave's picks in the wow. form of a bet moji. What okay, so, Pony, what leg doesn't hit? That is I brave. legitimately think it's the worst parlay I've ever seen constructed. Good, then I watched it and thought to myself, <laughs> is Dave doing a bizarro parlay? I legitimately <laughs> might take the opposite of all eight legs and make my own same that's game be, parlay. That's, that would because pay more. He, that's because he believes in Seattle, right? And I don't know what Pony's thinking. He is tripping. Pony, wow. let me just save you all the time it would take to put that into the app and just, <laughs> just tear your $20 up and throw it in the garbage. Uh, come on now. All right, great stuff Thank by you, you guys. Thank you, Cole. Thank you, James. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm going with that. Oh, man. Of course, uh, when you parlay, your odds explode. You saw that happen right there in front of your eyes. It is awesome. Go ahead and tail Dave. Or, hey, create your own big payday parlay on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. You can do it right now. And you can, if you're new to the FanDuel Sportsbook, welcome. You can also get in on the fun with Daily Fantasy. One-stop shop right there on your phone phone fandle is a bunch of dfs contests live right now where you can win thousands of dollars on fandle.com and on the app now the question is how do you give yourself an edge well you got to find the best value at each position jim sonis has been bringing us the players you need in your lineup each and every week now he's turning it up for super wild card weekend jim who are your best value plays for the saturday games Thanks, Lisa. Two really fun games on tap for Saturday, and I think we should be able to get values in each game over on FanDuel. That begins with Kenneth Walker III coming in at $6,600. Walker has had a massive role recently with at least 23 carries and 105 yards from scrimmage in three consecutive games. So a super tough matchup here, but I do think that Walker is undersoured enough to nullify that. Sticking inside that same game, I like Debo Samuel coming in at $6,900. Debo's role last week was limited coming off his injury but in the full games he has played with Christian McCaffrey Debo is still at eight targets per game so for his salary now down at $6,900 I think that Debo is in a good value spot a potential bounce back spot with the playoffs on the line finally we'll finish things off in the nightcap with Travis Etienne coming in at $7,100 Etienne has had a big role this year even when you include last week's dud Etienne is still at 94.6 yards from scrimmage per game in his nine full games as this team's lead back. ETN also has a 42% red zone share across that same sample. I think the Jags can move the ball on the ground here. I think they'll keep this game close, maybe even have a shot to win it. So Travis ETN at a low salary lease, back on the menu for Wild Card Weekend. Ooh, yes, we're turning it up. Thank you, Jim. Set your lineups now at FanDuel.com. Follow Jim on Twitter at Jim Sonis and check out his Covering the Spread podcast wherever you get your podcasts. All right, up next, we're focusing on the three Sunday games here on the schedule for us. Do our guys think the favorites will cover, or is there a money line upset that they're picking? That is a tease right there. TV lingo in here. This is FanDuel TV, and we are coming right back. Welcome back to more ways to win everybody. It is super wild card weekend and we are betting the Sunday games right now and we're giving them the expert versus X player treatment which means our seasoned betting experts will debate a game with our X player JJ with the Super Bowl ring nine years in the league. I tell him he could just wear his jersey if he wants to. Uh, all right let's start this thing uh, the expert versus X player battle with the first game on the Sunday schedule. It's the seventh seeded Dolphins at the second seeded Bills and what a season for Buffalo. Buffalo, right on both sides of the ball second in scoring offense second in scoring defense and then you got the Dolphins played the Bills close this year they won by two yeah. lost by three 
Who's on the field this week uh, is a, a different story. Skylar Thompson expected to be under center again, so the line is now 13 and a half right now. Dave, is that number too big for Buffalo? Well, I was curious, how big is that line in comparison to some of the wild card games in the history of the NFL? It's actually the biggest line ever uh, in wild card weekend, 13 and a half points. The second biggest was last year when the Chiefs were minus 12 and a half against the Steelers and they won by 21. Overall, there have been six games at minus 10 and a half or higher, and the favorite has covered every single time. Why? Because you can get some total mismatches in this first round of the playoffs, and that's exactly what we have here. Yes, the Miami's played Buffalo a little bit close uh, in the two games this year, but overall, Josh Allen has had his way with the Dolphins in Buffalo. He's won every game, and four of them have been by double digits, including wins by 35, 30, 25. So I see this being a blowout. I just do not see how Miami offense, which is very hurt right now. Tyreek Hill was limping off the field three or four times, keep coming back in last week. Waddle went out. Uh, two is not playing. I, I don't see how Miami James can yeah. match points here with the Buffalo Bills, who are on yeah. an absolute mission right yeah. now. Yeah, a couple couple things here, Dave, right? Um, number one, um, if you got some time to run any errands um, over the weekend, uh, when this game come on, that's the right time to do it because this is going to be a beatdown. I mean, I'm not the only one that's seen them go out there with a backup, backup, backup quarterback against the New York Jets and really only scored nine points and couldn't move the ball up and down the football field. You're talking about going to Buffalo to move the ball and you're going to have to be in the 30s to win this game. I don't even see how the Dolphins get to 10 points in this game with their backup, backup, backup quarterback. I don't care what weapons are out there. I think Buffalo comes out at home. They put their foot on the Dolphins' throat early in this ball game. It will be cold. The Dolphins will be sitting over there before halftime like we already down three scores. It's time to go home and get out of this cold, take a hot shower, and get ready to go to Cabo. But this is going to be a beat down. You got to run errands. You got to go to Target anywhere you got to go. Hey, go run your errands during this one. <laughs> All right, let's get to the second game on Sunday. This one should be a closer, should be a great game. You're not going anywhere during this game. Six seeded Giants at the third seeded Vikings. This game features two of the most explosive players in the game. We've seen it all season long. Vikings Justin Jefferson led the NFL in receiving. Then you got the Giants Saquon Barkley fourth in rushing yards. These two teams played in week 16 in Minnesota, a memorable game. Vikings mm -hmm. needing that field goal as time expired to pull out that three point win. Cole, Minnesota, a three point home favorite this week. Who do you like? Lisa, I feel like you're this game's agent right now because you're doing a great <laughs> job hyping this one up. But uh, with the way two teams defend, look like that security guard uh, that's patting people down as they walk into the club, uh, they don't want to stop anybody right now. The Giants, their bottom half in defense as well as offense and passing offense. So when you combine that and you think that that's bad, well, uh, take a look at what Minnesota brings to the table. They're the 31st ranked defense in the league, and that's not good any way you slice it, especially in the playoffs. But the one thing that Minnesota has going for them right about now is that they have 11 one score wins. And when you can keep it close, especially in that second season, it could be a gigantic feather in that Viking hat. So I'll see this one and I'll see it in favor of Minnesota 24 to 20. Kirk, he gets it done. Oh, wait, you like Kirk Cousins, huh? Uh, I, I didn't say that. Oh, okay. I didn't say that. I like Kirk <laughs> like that. But they're going to win. <laughs> Oh my goodness, for me, 31st, you just said 31st ranked defense, right? You do not get into the playoffs and win a playoff game unless your offense just goes crazy with the 31st ranked defense. I do believe in the Giants this, this game, and I ain't believed in the Giants all season long. I said I would never pick the Giants, but they here, all right? And they done got here, and they done won a lot of one-score games as, as well. And last time, this was a one-score game, and the Giants felt like they should have won this game. They come out, they lean on Saquon Barkley, they get after Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins turns the football over. He's the Kirk Cousins that everybody is used to seeing when the big games come on, the playoffs come on. I don't think the Vikings are playing good football right now. We've seen them get beat down by the Packers. It wasn't a really good outing against the Chicago Bears. I don't think they're going into the playoffs with a lot of confidence. And once again, I'm going to say it again, 31st ranked defense. That means you're not stopping a nosebleed. 
All right, and it ain't going to start with the Giants. I got the Giants in this one. All right, guys. Let's move on to the late game here. Sunday, six-seeded Baltimore, third-seeded Cincinnati. These teams split their season series, including a Bengals win in Cincy just last week, and we saw it get very chippy on the sidelines a couple times. Mm -hmm. Ravens fans hoping Lamar Jackson will be in the lineup for this one. I'm telling you, he's injured. In week 13, he has not played nor practiced since. It's been over a month. Mm -hmm. Pony, the Bengals are eight-and-a-half-point home favorites. What do you make of this line? I don't like lines that look like this for division rivals in the playoffs. These are typically close games. Defense favor the Ravens. Third in defense in the league this year. The Roquan Smith move, he's paid, so his mind, maybe unlike Lamar Jackson, is in the right place for this one. They've already held Joe Burrow to only 17 points. That was back in Baltimore. So they actually won that game with defense, not Lamar Jackson, James. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, John Harbaugh just thrives in these situations. He is nine and five outright on the road in the playoffs. His teams have always been comfortable leaving Baltimore for playoff games. They'd go to New England and beat Tom Brady in the playoffs. I like the Ravens to keep this game close and competitive. Close and competitive and win, or close and competitive and lose? Close and competitive and lose, oh, James. Oh, my goodness. On oh. a last second, Evan McPherson <laughs> field goal from 47 yards. Write it down. Clip that, Lisa. 47-yard game winner. Lamar, are you going this week? <laughs> yeah, okay. We riding. We riding, all right? I just talked to Lamar. We riding this week. I had this same injury. Wait, I got Lamar. Anthony Brown on line two. He says he's playing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He ain't an impact like Lamar. Lamar Action Jackson under center is a totally different Baltimore Ravens team. I do believe he'll play. Give him as much rest as possible. Get off of that knee as much rest as possible. We need you for game day. When Lamar Jackson is under center, this Ravens team is playing at a whole different level. You talked about Coach Harbaugh knows how to win in the playoffs. Lamar Jackson coming back with this third-ranked defense like you spoke of. I think this one right here, Joe Joe Burrow goes home early this year. No magical run to the Super Bowl. Lamar Action Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens come in and spoil all of their plans. And it's gonna start, even if Lamar's in there, it's gonna start on the defensive side of the ball. Stopping JoJo Burrow, getting some takeaways, and they are more than capable of getting that done. This is a division game, like Pony said. It is gonna be tough. It is gonna be close. I like Baltimore in this one, winning a really close game. They're a totally different team without Lamar Jackson, guys. Uh, great stuff by all of you guys. Let's get to our best bets of the week. Our experts are giving them out in the form of a spread money line and total bet. It's part of our weekly competition where each of the guys gets 100 virtual dollars for those three bets. We do it all season long. And Pony, you went 2-1 and one last week and made more than 20 bucks profit. And not huge, not huge, but I say a win is a win. And I like it. Uh, let's see if you can finish in the black again this week. Give me more than 20, Pony. Come on. Yeah. Are we going to review Dave or no? Okay. No, no. We're, we're just go moving on, on. Fast okay. forward. In the fast forward. All right. Way. Short Let's on time, go. Pony. Okay. I'm going to start with the Dolphins. I know this is one of the most one-sided matchups in playoff history. Am I insane? Well, uh, Josh Allen lost to Zach Wilson earlier in the year. They didn't cover twice against the, against the Jets. In games where Buffalo was a double-digit favorite this year, they went two and three against the spread. Losing record, profitable record if you bet against them. Take Miami with the points in that one. My money line pick, I'm going with the Giants. Greg Joseph needed to make a 61-yard field goal the last time these two teams played in December. And the Giants were minus two in the turnover differential. I don't think the Vikings have played a good game since Thanksgiving night. I'm taking the Giants to win that game. My last one is an under bet in Jacksonville and LA. Yeah, they've got great young quarterbacks, but look at these two teams scoring output. Jacksonville, last three games have gone under. The Chargers, five of six have gone under. This game will go under too. I agree with you on that, but the reason it's going under is because the Chargers are going to shut Jacksonville down. My bet, uh, my best bet of the week is the Chargers laying the two and a half points. So I'm going to put $55 to win 50 on the Chargers as my spread bet. Their defense has really improved, and when Allen 
Eckler, Williams are all out there. This is a very tough team to beat. I think the, it's a very generous line, too, to be less than a field goal. So that's my best bet. The Chargers 55 to win 50. We're talking about the Ravens. If they can keep this game close, why can't they win it? I'm with James. I think this is the upset special of the week. I can't see Seattle. Wow. I can't see the Dolphins winning. But I can see Baltimore with their defense winning this game. So $20 on them on the money line. And then my $25 total bet will go on a game where I think one team can get it all. I think the 49ers could score 43 points themselves. The total is 42 and a half, $25 on the over. All right, and Brock Purdy, we trust. Uh, so yes. Some interesting strategies there. We'll see which one is the best after this week, and we will air the results on next week's show. Hit up the FanDuel Sportsbook now to place your bets before kickoff. And coming up on this show, we are hitting the Monday night game, and our guys are giving you their hottest take of the day. Will Tom Brady showcase that playoff magic he's been known for, or is this the year the Cowboys finally break through and make that deep playoff run? Plus, which team should be on upset alert? Cole and James giving you their money line moneymaker picks of the week. That's after the break. We'll be right back. Yes, it's Super Wild Card Weekend, and we have just one more game left on the schedule to break down. It is for you. We're doing it right now. Monday night showdown between the fifth-seeded Cowboys and the fourth-seeded Bucks. These two teams actually faced off way back in week one in Dallas. Bucks won that one 19-3. We throw that away because these are two totally different teams right now as we kick off these playoffs, guys. A long time ago, the Cowboys are now two-and-a-half-point road favorites in this matchup. Going to get all of your picks, and Dave, you are starting off this carousel yeah so they have five losses they, they lost that game in Dallas but what has been the common denominator of their other four losses this year when they go and play teams on grass they're great on turf this defense is fast they're built to play on turf what happened when we went to Minnesota they had their best game of the year they shut them down they scored three points what happened when they went to Jacksonville they gave up 40 points to the Jags. They lost to Washington, giving up 26 points to Sam Howell. They lost to Philadelphia, and they lost to the Packers. I'll hold my nose on that one. So this team going and playing on the grass in Tampa is not what they're built for. I think if this game was in Dallas, I would pick the Cowboys. But I just see a trend here. They're a different team on the natural surface. That's my take. I'm going with uh, Tampa. You know what, Dave? I don't care if this game is played on the concrete. Uh, I hear all those <laughs> stats that you're saying about the Cowboys, but Tampa's been worse. I mean, you won a division with nine wins, right? And you should have probably finished with seven wins, right? And the last, thank God, the last couple teams on your schedule was the teams in your division. That was no good. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have been no good all year long. I think since week one is the last time we thought that they were going to be good, favored in the ball game, whatever it may be. But they are not playing good football. I don't care if you got the GOAT Tom Brady at the quarterback spot. They have not been playing good football. The Dallas Cowboys are going to go out there. They're going to handle their business. They're going to run the ball down their throat. Dak Prescott is going to do what he does. C.D. Lamb. They are going to win this ball game, and they're going to win this ball game easy out there in Tampa. And like I said earlier, they're going to force Tom Brady to come back for the next year because Tom ain't going out with no beat down. But Dak Prescott, Coach Mike McCarthy, they coming into the building, and they finna walk out of this thing with a W. James actually giving the Bucs too much credit. They only won eight games. They're see, a losing see, team I'm trying to in the playoffs. A <laughs> Dave must think he's back at Santa Anita looking at the uh, horse <laughs> racing the turf, form. Yeah. Are they on turf? Are they in mud? I mean, what's going on with the surface? That's an interesting spin on the game. No, I like, I like the Cowboys. Brady can't move. Brady is confined in the pocket, and he's going against the team that's third in sacks, third in pressure rate with the great – Micah Parsons. He will be the MVP of this game, and the Cowboys will cover. Oh, the one guy backing me up doesn't no. even turn his mic on. Oh, fail. Uh, I cut his mic. Fail. I muted him, yeah. Dave. Fail. 
killed. I know he was going to pick Tom Brady, though. You know, it, that's exactly I know exactly right. what Cole is saying. I know what he's trying to say. He's saying the Cowboys going to win this one big. Tom Brady is done. He cannot move <laughs> no. in the pocket. He yeah, cannot exactly. throw the ball down the football field. And he's we giving know he, Mike McCarthy some know, love, James. We, yeah, we know he's going his, to bat for McCarthy. No doubt. Your we know guy. he broke his own record, 5,000-plus yards. But this game right here, he's just outnumbered. The Dallas Cowboys, you see, you read his lips. The Dallas Cowboys just cannot lose this game. Coach Mike McCarthy is going to out-coach Todd Bowles. W for the Dallas Cowboys. That's what Cole was telling y'all. I doubt it. You know, we need to tell Cole is there's this uh, there's a mute button. You know what I'm uh, saying? Just, just take the mute off, Cole. Uh, oh. All right. We previewed every single game on the schedule this weekend, focusing on the spread. And now I'm going to switch it up a little bit. We're going to drop some money line upset picks, and we're going to do it right for you right now. This segment has taken on a life of its own. Get your bet emojis ready, guys. Uh, so just like we've done all year long, James is going to give us a money line upset pick. The rest of the guys are going to react with the appropriate emoji. And James, you are up first. Here we go. Well, I'm going to start this thing off. Four choices. And I told you guys that I just called him. All right. I'm phone right here. Lamar Action Jackson is going to play in this ball game. And he is going to go out there to Cincinnati with this big time defense, third ranked defense. And they are going to give JoJo Burrow problems all game long. I'm saying two takeaways this defense gets. I'm saying Lamar Action Jackson and this running game get going. They put up points. It's a division game. You're never really going to run away with these division games. It is going to be close. It is going to be a play need to be made in the fourth quarter with the game on the line. The ball is going to be in Lamar Jackson's hands, and he will make the play. If the defense is on the field, the defense will get a stop in a really close game and win this ball game for the Baltimore Ravens. Coach Harbaugh walking out of Cincinnati again with a W this season. All right, so the Ravens are getting eight and a half points on the road in Cincinnati. And I shared this with you in the last commercial break. In the five games, I mean, totally different team yep. when Jackson's on the field. In the five games he has missed, they have averaged 13 Holy. points per game. It is second worst in the NFL. That is, that is stinky. So if he doesn't yeah. play. Yeah, James, what if it's in? Huntley? Huh? Would you still take the Ravens if it's Huntley? Would you I, still I, take I, call, him? I call Lamar. I call Lamar. Oh, okay. So I don't even, I'm not even worried about if it's Huntley. You know what I mean? But I call Lamar. We're going to get this thing done. Yes. Yeah, so I, I think they can throw win without all those him. Stats out. Yeah. Go right I back like to the Ravens okay. with or without. Okay. But he, wow. would be, he would be a huge bonus, yeah. obviously. Wow. But I think Ooh. defensively, they could pull some tricks here on JoJo. Ooh. All right, all right. So uh, that's a plus 315 like on it. the money line. Get that plus money right now. Hey, <laughs> awesome stuff if you agree with James or if, uh, you know, you've got your own upset pick ready to roll. I say this every single week. You do you. Hop yeah. on the FanDuel Sportsbook <laughs> app now. Get that plus money before kickoffs this weekend. Thank you, my man. I love that pick. Oh, yeah. All right, coming up, the playoffs are about to kick off, which means the Super Bowl odds are updated. Our experts are revealing their best value sleeper teams that is next. Welcome back to more ways to win here on FanDuel TV. It is Super Wild Card Weekend, and we are going to do a quick recap of all the games that we hit already on this show. So we're going to get right to it. Seattle at San Francisco. Pony, this game is for you. 49ers are giving nine and a half. It's a big line. Who do you like? Yeah, and it shouldn't be. Brock Purdy becomes the first seventh-round rookie quarterback to start a playoff game the latest round rookie to win in the playoffs, quarterback T.J. Yates in 2011. It is a rare occurrence. You guys talk about division games being close. Put your money where your mouth is on this game. Seattle will hang around. You know what, Pony, and I know Cole about to go, but Coach always told me, <laughs> believe what you see. Right? Don't go off of where he was drafted, where I don't care how low what believe what you see brock purdy has showed you week in and week out that i got this day. it's a whole new season <laughs> i watched ben roethlisberger struggle as a rookie james he got a little bit butterfly feeling this time of year i'm telling Dave, you dave's t-shirt under his jacket says in brock Pur That's purdy right. i trust you found one in your size dave that must have been hard chargers at jacksonville we got to get to these jags who are two and a half point home dogs cole what's your take 
Well, uh, I've never believed in the Chargers. We've known that since the very beginning of time. I called them the West Coast Dolphins. Pony and I, we talk about that. Now, uh, the only time they've beaten the team with a record over 500, that was week 15, and that was against the Miami Dolphins. I just don't think that they'll be able to really get their hands on a squad like the Jacksonville Jaguars because they've won five straight. Doug Peterson, uh, the last time he won a Super Bowl, you may recall his team won six of the last eight. And uh, you look at Trevor Lawrence, he's getting after it, averaging 255 passing yards per game. I think this is all Jacksonville. In wh where, where's it at, James? Doom! Yeah. yeah, Jags, they, they steal the show in this one, 27-21. Uh, go, go, go Google, Jags. Steal the show. You know, you, you know what, Cole? You know that that that's a money pick, number one. But I just, I just what wish I you knew how to work your camera and and air, earbuds because you know fault. what you're talking about. Fault. You know it's what you're talking about. Fault. I just wish we had I, you. More. I have I have Tampa over the Dallas <laughs> Cowboys Tampa. because ball security, ball security is where it's at. Oh, man, no, so, no, we didn't say you get to come to your pick. Now in 10 12. <laughs> so now we know why your mic and all that cut off because yeah. you was going to uh, see you was going to get that. Tom's never lost to the Cowboys. Boys. Our, our producers have Seven lost all control. I have yes, lost have. all control. Uh, but this is the energy I need I'm out my, in my mornings, oh, injected man. in my veins. You guys, yeah. this is great. Dolphins at the Bills. Let's talk about these East Coast Dolphins, huh? Buffalo, 13 and a half point home favorites. Dave, it's because of that oh. quarterback situation. No, it's because Buffalo is going to absolutely kill them. I mean, here's but the, the line. It, it was ten and a half, and yeah, then it moved two when was they officially knew two was a and it's three points. But I'll give you the exact score here too. Buffalo thirty-seven, mm. Dolphins ten. They'll, they'll win by twenty-seven. They'll, they'll double mm. the spread. Yeah, yeah, they're on a mission. All right, let's keep her trucking here. Giants, Vikings, Vikings three-point home favorites. Cole, back to you. Mm. Is this thing on? Well. I, yeah, it's on. I, it, I'm rolling with it, but uh, I don't feel good about either one of these squads, especially when it comes to their defense, because you take a look at uh, the Giants, uh, not good. Bottom half defense and then offense, that's not good either. Overall, bottom half, the passing offense, even worse. But then you take a look at Minnesota and their defense, th 31st hey. in the league. Mm. Is, is that good? I mean, how do you win so many games and get yourself into that second season, as we mm. know, as the playoffs? I'll tell you how Minnesota did that. And they won 11 one score games. So if you can keep it close and make sure things are nice and tidy down the stretch, well, when you look up at the scoreboard at the end, you may have yourself a W. And that's what may happen for those Minnesota Vikings. 24 to 20. I don't necessarily trust in Kirk Cousins, but I do trust in what Minnesota can do versus this team. I'm glad you ended with that. Uh, you don't trust in Kirk Cousins. So I'm oh, glad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the Ravens at Bengals. Uh, heard talked about this team uh, quite a bit, actually. The Ravens getting eight and a half points. Pony, we know JJ's taking yours. Mm. Well, I just want to make sure that our viewers <laughs> look at that line, mm. and there's a reason why it's gone over a touchdown. I know that Lamar made a personal call to James, mm. but if that <laughs> if Lamar was playing in this game, that line would probably be more of a four or five point spread. We know Tyler Huntley's kind of banged up. If it's Anthony Brown, that line might even go closer to the Dolphins' bill. So I think they tried to middle it right smack dab in the middle. I still like the Ravens, but that line tells me Lamar Jackson is not going to play. Well, that's why we give the breaking news and all that stuff here, man. That's why we're on TV, man, because I'm telling you, man, number eight going out there. Come on, James Schefter. <laughs> you heard it here first. Uh, all right, let's get to these Cowboys at the Bucks. Dallas, two and a half point road favorites. Dave, this one is you. Yep, me and Cole, we're riding with the GOAT. Uh, Tom Brady gets the job done. <laughs> Dallas, much better team on the artificial turf <laughs> than the natural grass surface. They've, done, they've lost to bad teams on grass all year long, including Washington and Jacksonville. You come back, uh, James. No, we lost Schefter. Schefter just walked off. No, when, when I, <laughs> when I said go he's and it wasn't bit. Aaron Rodgers, he He's got more breaking news That's for us. How is the belief yeah. so strong? <laughs> Their and offensive Pony, line is going to help here. I even tried to help them out and, and give them a winning season. Pony said, nah, -uh, JJ, they the losing <laughs> team in the playoffs. And you guys are picking them we'll see. to win. <laughs> Cowboys oh, haven't won. That's not 1995. They Pony, don't win playoff Pony, games. That's why I told you earlier. 
Believe what you see. You see these two? You see Cole? <laughs> with his light I saw him throw three touchdowns to Mike Evans. <laughs> with his light shining on his forehead. Yeah, against you see Carolina, they needed to here. escape that they game. Are they not barely won. believing what they see. Tom oh. and them have been garbage all season long, <laughs> and it is not going to change this week. Oh, it is. Not on the concrete. They're the worst the team in the NFL against the spread, Dave. They could have played in the parking lot. Cowboys going to win this one. All right, so we won't be talking about Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, (laughs) but the playoffs are kicking off, and they're happening this weekend, so that means the Super Bowl is coming, and we cannot end this show without talking Super Bowl futures, where Kansas City is the favorite. Don't judge me at home. I just report (laughs) facts here. Uh, All right, Dave, are you going to chalk? You have a dark horse pick here. You see value on the board, or are you going off? I've got a dark horse. It's a team that's going to have to win a lot of games on the road, but that's something that's been done uh, of late, and I'm talking about the Los Angeles Chargers. Mm. I like it. I like it. I like Justin Herbert, but it's, it's one and done for them, though, uh, out of there. Uh, playing against Duval. I'm going Baltimore. I'm going Lamar Action Jackson. Lamar steps out there. He goes out there. He plays, wills his team to victory. They walk out of Cincinnati with a W. I'm looking for maximum value. The Cowboys at 13 to 1, 8 and 9 Tampa, unfinished business against the Eagles, and maybe Brock Purdy in a championship game. 13 to 1. Take a shot on Dallas Cow on the Dallas Cowboys. All right. How about some money is better than no money? And I'm just gonna go chalk with it because Las Vegas Raiders, I mean, they kicked me down a flight of stairs at the beginning of the season. Uh, plus 330 for Kansas City. It looks pretty good. Patrick Mahomes, first team all pro. And this guy right here, he, he's trying to get that Vince Lombardi trophy and put some fingerprints all over it. That's right. Going chalk doesn't mean you don't have to take risks. That's all right. You can just be right. That's okay. Mm-hmm. You can also just go ahead and put your money on the MVP, a guy that's throwing the ball in that game. He will be it. Um, all right, you guys ready for this? Kick, Let's get kick it. off yeah. these playoffs. Amazing. It's Let's here. Super wild card mm-hmm. weekend. It is here. The playoffs are here. Enjoy the games. Good luck with your bets. Hey, if you're new to the FanDuel Sportsbook, welcome. Make sure you hit up mm-hmm. FanDuel Sportsbook app. Sign up for your new account using that promo code MoreWays1000. And we will see you right back here next week to keep these things going. Enjoy the games, everybody.